Hey everyone, thanks for joining me tonight. I'll get this timing here sooner or later with this program. But thanks so much for joining me again tonight. So tonight I have a great plat uh, little demonstration here tonight. I think you're going to benefit a lot from what I have to go over. But essentially we're going to be doing part two of day two of a seven day bathroom remodel. So just to give you a little bit background about how this course is being developed is that I'm working right along uh, this month putting this all together. This is a bathroom that I did in July of uh, this year. So, you know, most of the time you'll see me in these videos, I'm really, really sweating profusely. And that's because the uh, it was about 100 degrees this summer. So in July, I did two bathrooms for this client. And one was just a traditional bathroom. So it's just a, a five foot by eight foot bathroom, has a tub, a vanity, toilet. So all your basic components. But the real thing that I'm excited to share with you is just basically the pattern of how I went about it. And we basically gutted everything down to the studs and, and we redid everything. So there's a lot of great information in here for you. Tonight, we're primarily gonna be going over installing the rest of the tub and in this tub and shower faucet. That's usually what I try to get done on the second day. So there's a lot of great details in here, especially if you're a beginner or somebody who, uh, you know, just needs some advice on what to order and what to get ahead of time to make it easier for themselves. I have a lot of great information about these shower systems. So let me just show you what this bathroom looks like. Let me get myself out of the way here. And please give me a thumbs up if anybody's in the chat. I just want to make sure that this is actually running. It looks like it's saying to go live. You know, I better start recording this too. Okay, so I'm going to record this and then go on my YouTube app. Just make sure that everything's in. And uh, yes, we are live. Okay, thank you. All right. So anyways, let me get myself out of the way here so that you could see what this bathroom really is so that maybe you can relate to what we're doing here. So this is basically the standard bathroom that we're building or, or that, that exists in this uh, bathroom. A couple little smaller details that, I, that are different, but this is basically the setup. This is a pretty traditional way for most bathrooms to be set up. Just basically having the, the, the tub on the five foot section of the eight foot side of the room a toilet, and then a 30-inch vanity. So all pretty common, normal uh, things. Uh, the only difference in this bathroom that I'm doing, it was actually a 30-inch tub, not a 32-inch, uh, because you want to you want to keep note here that you really want to have 15 inches from the center of your toilet to the edge of any fixture. So that's really important, um, but not all homes were really built that way so you might end up with something that's less than what code requires uh, but in my in the bathroom that we're remodeling on this one it was just a 30 inch tub because the toilet was a little too close to the fixture to be able to get a 32 inch tub and that's one thing you need to you know kind of analyze before you go ordering materials making sure that you're going to be able to get things that are going to fit properly in your bathroom there's way too often i get uh, you know, I work for clients and they come home with like a, a really large vanity and it's just oversizing the room and not large enough. So, um, you know, keep that in mind, uh, make sure that the space fits the new stuff that you're going to, to be using. Um, but this home that I'm built, that I did this on was basically a, uh, it was built in the 1970s and it was a split entry home. So again, this is just part two of day two of a bathroom uh, remodel and we're going to go through you i'm just going to show you exactly what i have in the course and uh, basically go step by step on how to go about this so let's get right into it and actually you know what let me well we'll go through this first so if you enroll in this uh, basically i have two courses available uh, right now, I'm enrolling on this one. I only have two days available on the seven-day process, so I'm still working that out, and I'm hopefully going to have it done by the end of January. But this is, you know, if you enroll today, you're going to get it at a very, very discounted price. I'm just selling it for $25 right now because I don't have it complete, but I want to get people in here. So thanks so much for everyone who has joined. It's actually been a tremendous sight to see how many people came in, and I'm really hoping that's going to help 
you out with uh, with your own project here. So I have two courses right now. I have the custom glass enclosure and then the tub and shower. Uh, the custom glass enclosure, I'll, I might discuss that a little bit later on what's detailed there, but let's just get right into what this whole event is about. So the tub and shower course, it's basically gonna go through everything that it takes to go from demo to installing the tub, to setting the shower faucet. That's what we're gonna be going over tonight. Waterproofing, hanging drywall, setting drywall, towel setting, which should be the fun part of the project. And those are the things that I'm gonna uh, hopefully demonstrate well enough for you that you can actually have fun doing the actual tiling project. There's just a lot of tips I'm gonna be giving that will make it a lot easier for you, including getting thin set that's gonna have a good pot life and last a really long time. Um, but then we have, uh, I'm going to be going over epoxy grouting and basically everything else it takes to actually finish up the project. So there's a lot of great, um, information that I, I'm going to provide in each section and along with a lot of links and a lot of additional information. So if you join the course and you have questions, that's just going to help me out. It's going to make this course better because really I'd love to see people get into this and say, Hey, you know what? I didn't even have any questions and I was able to remodel my whole bathroom myself. And that's, that's really my main goal is providing help. I know that it's really tough to get contractors out to bid anything these days, even to take a look at it. Um, you know, if you're if you are a contractor and you're you have uh, you know have experience, you're probably booked up for quite a long time. So um, you know, I think there is a real pressure point for people needing to start you know taking things into their own hands and and remodeling their own bathrooms and then if you are a new contractor i want to help you out as well because i really wish i would have had this type of um, platform when i started out I wouldn't have had to hurt, learn everything the hard way but let's go over a recap of yesterday of what we did so uh it was basically part one of day two and you can go into my youtube channel here, let me just show you that real quick. So going into my YouTube channel, please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, hit the notification bell so that you get a notification for these live streams. What the heck? Am I not on live right now? Oh, why don't, why don't I have the live chat in here? I'm sorry, guys. All right. <laughs> I will get the hang of this one or the other. I don't know why it's saying set reminder here on my YouTube channel. But anyways, um, if you go to playlists, so you click on playlist, you'll be able to see the full playlist of this bathroom remodel. So I'm going to have each one of these in here so that you can go ahead and take a look at it. So um, I just wanted to show you that real quick so that you can go back and take a look at the other portions of the course. So anyways, let's get back to what we were discussing with the, the pre-roll here. So this is basically what we have done earlier in the day. And this is really what I would do before lunch, basically. Um, you know, that's kind of how I have this kind of structured is that I get a certain amount of done per day before lunch. And then I finish up afterwards. But here, I'll just show you what we've gotten done on the beginning half of the second day. So basically removing that trap, that's really important. This is where you're going to really discover any issues with the bathroom is once you demo everything out and just try to see what kind of plumbing. So this can take some time. If you don't have all the materials that you need, this can hog up a little bit of time. And we dry fitted or we put a new subfloor down. We wanted to make sure that we get our fern co on there uh, because it's a lot easier doing that before you put the new subfloor down, getting that all addressed. So this was actually a pretty cookie cutter um, bathroom as far as being able to adapt things but we got the drain assembly on that makes it a lot easier if you put the drain assembly together before you set the tub especially if you're working by yourself it'll save you a lot of time and as you can see I'm just using a lot of silicone I'm a big fan of it it's something that uh, will ensure you from having any type of leaks so that's really about what we got on the first portion of the day was basically just getting that drain assembly and your plumbing all intact so in our next series of videos, I'm going to be showing about installing the actual tub and securing it and then installing the, the valve. And as you can see, 
I love using that silicone. Definitely overflows are just as important as the main drain. So, um, you know, it just really keep, makes it a, a leak free installation. So then we just dry fit it. So that was, that was the beginning half of the first day. Okay, so then we'll go to goals of the day here. So, and I should just mention here, let me get myself out of the way for this real quick. So one nice thing about the way what I built this on was on teachable.com. So you can see on the left-hand side here, it has everything really well organized and put together. And you can just go step-by-step step all the way through. And they, I like kind of how they have these little indicators showing how much of each lesson you actually went through. So if you're just trying to scour through, get an idea of you know what the process is, that's a good way to go about it is just go into each video and kind of browse through all of my information that I have here because I do have a lot of great information here that will get you set up so that you don't have to be stressed when you actually get that bathroom demoed. At least you'll have most of the materials that you need. Now, when it comes to plumbing, it is a tough thing to tell exactly um, every component that you need. So most likely this second day, there is going to be some running around that you might need to do it, but I really am trying to get this so that you can be, um, uh, you know, prepared and, and really be able to try to stay focused and get things done. Because that's the whole reason for this seven day deal. I, I know a lot of people, you know, obviously have uh, regular working jobs. Um, at least I hope most everyone does. And, you know, you might only have a week off to be able to accomplish this. Well, this course is going to help you at least get a functional bathroom by the end of that week. So, you know, I really believe that um, if you had any, you know, a, you know, mechanical ability, I think the path that I have on here would get you to at least have a functional bathroom by the end of the week. There, there might be some details that you're not going to have finished. You might not have the bathroom painted or you might not um, have some of those accessories up, but you know, you can live without that. I know that, you know, if you have a family, you're needing getting that, that tub in and you're needing to, uh, needing to use it, especially if you only have one bathroom in the house. So I know how stressful that is. And I know how that is when I go to work for clients, they, you know, as soon as you demo that bathroom, they are just completely on, <laughs> on anxiety mode because they're afraid you're not going to be able to get it back together. Now, um, obviously I have a lot of experience, so, you know, I calm their fears by that. But if you're a new contractor, this course is going to help guide you into, you know, a process that will make that client co uh, comfortable. You'll see in a lot of my tutorials here, and, and especially on these live streams, I'm trying to give tips on how to make the process easier for your client. Uh, and, and really there's, you know, a couple of key points is that that demo day, when you, del when you remove everything, you know, I really try to try to get that, that drywall hung in that ceiling on that first day so that, you know, there isn't any anxiety about looking up into the attic and, and having all that insulation and cool air. So good doctor. Uh, looks like a good course. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you for always commenting on my videos. That always really helps the algorithm. That's, true, that's one thing I should mention is please uh, give a like on this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. That definitely helps out the channel a lot. Let me get myself out of the way here so that we can get into the tutorial. Okay, there we go. And then well, let's just go over the goals for, oh, I'm sorry. We already did that. <laughs> let's get into the actual tub uh, installation. So we already did these three courses on the left-hand side here. We did the, uh, the subfloor drain prep and then we did the drain assembly. So now we're getting into actually installing the tub. And in this portion, I'm going to be showing about, uh, you know, the drain assembly of this as well. So dry fitting is something that you want to see how level, let me just pause foot. right there actually. So dry fitting a tub, you're going to end up doing this multiple times. Um, and it's a really good practice too, because you want to make sure that the ledger board sits where you need it to. You want to make sure that the plumbing lines up. So on any given bathroom, I probably dry fit that tub three to four different times 
during the process. Uh, it's very rare that you can just get it in there immediately. And that's another reason removing all of the drywall in the bathroom or plaster or whatever it is that you have, because that will make it much easier for this entire process. If you have, if you don't have any walls that you're trying to fidget that tub around, you're almost not going to want to keep dry fitting. it if it is, and I understand that a lot of people are, um, you know, they're basically, apprehensive about gutting the entire bathroom because they either one they don't they might not have the budget to do it which you know i would have to push back on because drywall is not very expensive and if you can't afford 200 dollars worth of drywall then maybe you know you should save up and and wait till you can but drywall is not a very expensive thing and either is the process of finishing it's actually very easy and it's forgiving you can keep going over and over again uh, to get your wall straight. So it's not like the end of the world um, as far as uh, finishing. It's not like you're not going to be able to accomplish getting that finished. So I really implore people to just gut everything down to the studs so that you can see the actual um, foundation that you're working with, you know, making sure that you look at that plumbing and that electrical. There's nothing worse than constantly patching things. And if you're spending, I mean, a typical bathroom remodel like this one here, just materials alone, is going to be between 4000 and 4500 Now, that all depends on the type of tile, the type of tub, and all those other things. But it's really hard to get less than $4,000 on a lot of these things because they're still like the core setting materials. And I'm in real belief that you want to get those quality um, products because, you know, why would you do something that's going to be inferior? That's not, that's not going to work right or not going to last a very long time. So there are a couple ways to maybe shrink that budget and, and, and make that smaller, but it's still, it's, it's an expensive process. So, you know, if you're putting that kind of money on top of all this stuff, you really want to see the mechanicals of what's there so that you don't ever have an issue in the future. So um, architectural sheet metal. Thanks, man. I really appreciate the support and uh, the course it's on teachable. I should state that. Thanks for reminding me. Um, bathroomremodeling.teachable.com that's where i have the course that's where it's basically a, a website builder in a sense but it really is great there's a lot of great tools that i am really looking forward to using on this um, i can add quizzes to this i can uh, add coaching so if you really need a lot of additional help i'm not set up for that yet but uh you know we can do uh, facetime or or other means of things to be able to you know kind of guide you through how to do this so there's a lot of great things on teachable that i'm looking forward to, to using but right now i just want to get this course all together so there's a complete package um you know so that you can move forward with that but here's the uh, yeah so anyways dry i was just basically stating that dry fitting your tub is you know you have to do it multiple times to to make sure that everything's correct or is so if it's a quarter inch out it's basically about what I am in four foot. That's not bad. I wouldn't really be too, really too concerned about that. It's once you get over a half inch or so, that's when you want to be more concerned about it. But the bubble's pretty much in the center. It's good enough. It's not too bad. <clears throat> My recommendation on that, anything so within a quarter just inch keep the tub is okay. Level. Okay. And then let's just take a look here. I mean, some people might push back on that quarter inch, but honestly, you can overcome a quarter inch pretty easy with tile work and everything else. So, um, but anything more than that, you're going to want to address that subfloor and get it more level. So I'm putting my yeah, ledger board in ledger here. Board here. I wanted to state real quick, because if you didn't watch my other videos, um, I just wanted to mention the tub that I was using. So let me go back to the tub and drain assembly. So in... The links below here, I have a, a lot of my recommendations. It's not just this specific tub that I'm installing that I have for you. I have a bunch of other recommendations for um, tubs that I have found that are really well constructed and I'm really happy with. So I would still, I would say my number one choice if you were to get a tub would be this jacuzzi uh, Lena. This is a an acrylic tub, really easy to clean, and it's a deep soaker. So. Um, you know, if you're looking to actually use the tub as an adult, you're going to want one of these deeper soakers because the regular traditional tubs just don't have the, the space. You know, they're they're only essentially like 10 inches of water in most of the uh, older style drains. So but this um, my next uh, 
you know, I don't want to go through everything I just went through yesterday. So watch another video on my advice on this. But I just wanted to uh, reiterate the actual tub that I'm using here. Um, why am I having a hard time finding this? Uh, is that it? Well, anyways, it's above rough in. So above rough in means, so this, this is the tub that I'm, I'm using. So this is the American cast uh, above rough in. So above rough in basically means the actual tail piece of the drain sits above the subfloor. So this is an image of underneath the tub and you can see that the three quarter inch plywood's right here and there is uh, space between the plywood and the actual tailpiece. Most tubs, that drain assembly is gonna be down below the floor. So this is made so that if you had a joist, so I have a joist right here, you can see, there's a joist right there and you would have to notch that out in order to have that tailpiece going into there. It was, it was already notched, so I could have just put in a traditional tub if I wanted to. But I, I had a, uh, well, I, now honestly, I had a hard time finding um, a tub that was in stock <laughs> for this job. And that, you know, honestly, that's why this course isn't going to be helpful because you'll be able to order the right materials and get set up before the job. That's really important. In some ways, I'm almost doing this selfishly because it's going to help keep myself straight when I'm doing the jobs, you know, making just having a checklist to make sure that I have everything. But anyways, I ended up ordering this above rough in tub because I didn't really do my due diligence and paid attention to where my framing was. And I always kind of go towards this type of tub when I, you know, I didn't do my homework. So if you if you're replacing your own tub, all I'm saying is just pay attention to where your framing is, where your joists are. This is a good option if you don't want to if you can't structurally cut through those joists. So anyways, the reason I'm telling you that is that this tub is a little unique in that aspect and it, it might be not something that you're actually going to be installing, but really the entire process of installing this tub is exactly the same. It's just that it doesn't have uh, the, the plumbing above the floor like that. So let me get back to back to the tub installation. So that's kind of nice. I'll go right back to it. And then there, there it is right where I started. So. 16 inches. All right. Then you want to measure your tub flange. So we got inch and a quarter. We're going to go inch and five sixteenths just because there's some crap on here. So you don't want to, you don't want to have it too high. So we'll go inch and five sixteenths. This is always a tough thing to tell because because a lot of the times when they're constructed, they're not always even underneath of there. So this is where dry fitting this tub a couple of times is going to come into play. You might have to move this ledger board down. Now, not all bathtubs require ledger boards. There's a lot of them out there that you just don't need them. Um, so pay attention to the specifics of your bathtub. So you just want to make sure that your ledger board is in a good position and everything's meeting well and then your tub is meeting the floor well um so like i said we're about a qu quarter inch off over four foot off of level Five not a foot. big deal uh it's just gonna have to you're just gonna have to remember that when you go to do the tile that you're not a hundred percent level on the back wall okay so i recommend you setting up your trap before you set the tub it's going to be a lot easier to configure this especially if you don't have any access so what i did was make a little mark here for where my drain assembly from the tub comes down and then i just kind of take took a look of how far away from the the edge of the my wall was so i was probably about an inch and a quarter inch and a half um it is pretty much just that eyeing wall up. so what, I, what I'm going to do is just glue the 90 degree elbow of the trap in with the extension to this and then I'll glue this in afterwards after I get the tub set so that you don't have to actually set the tub and get it into your trap. You can just take this off and then connect it. So roughly just keep this centered with where your drain assembly is. Now you have some wiggle room. You probably got three quarters of an inch either way that you can actually go. So you do have some additional room to work with. So let's just measure a small piece from my hub to hub here. So about three and a half inches would work. So we'll cut a three and a half inch piece of PVC 
And I'm using now, a sawzall here. It's best to yeah, use a chop saw to cut, have nice square cuts. But if you're in a pinch, you can just use a regular saw as well. All right, then we'll just dry fit this real quick, see, see where we're at. That should, that'd be fine. So we'll go ahead and glue this and connect this before we set the top. So we'll just set this aside. So you want to use uh, purple primer and then PVC glue for PVC fittings. So real simple. You just need the primer fitting and then the hub of the fitting. You know, and honestly, I'm going to just go ahead and prime this portion here because it's going to be easier to do it outside of the plumbing area. So they said at least that's already primed. And then we're going to add some glue to each side. And then I always just like do a twisting motion, just hold it for a few seconds. And then it'll grab hold. And we'll just connect this into this. nice and tight actually okay so now that connection um, I have gotten a lot of pushback a little bit from a lot of social media sites a lot of different plumbers from different areas stating that you can't have a fern co that it should be a no hub fitting um, I've been using these for a very long time never really had an issue the other thing that you could critique me on on this is that you really should have a um, shouldn't be using an impact and you should be using something that actually gets you a torque rating so a screwdriver or something that has a torque rating on it i believe uh you know from what i've been told it's about 60 pounds of torque uh again this is i mean i am demonstrating things that i have been in doing uh for the last 14 years um i've been a contract for 22 years now 2022 but the last 14 years I've been doing nothing but bathrooms and I almost, I wish I could count them all up, but I'm probably close to hundred bathrooms. You know, at my peak, uh, when, you know, mid thirties, I was doing, you know, two to three bathrooms, well, two bathrooms a month, two, two to three bathrooms a month. And, uh, you know, one after another. And I have done this exact scenario, uh, you know, dozens and dozens of times. I've never had an issue. Now, this technically is a basement bathroom, so there is access below. But I just want to let you know that some plumbers and people might have a problem with this Fernco. It's, 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 you know, again, I've never really had an issue. But if you wanted to do the proper fitting, it's called a no hub fitting. And you can get one that goes from copper to PVC. So a very simple fix if you're really concerned about um, code and, and making sure that everything's, you know, completely legit. Um, and then, you know, you just don't want to over tighten those worm clamps because obviously if you're over tightening and stripping them out, they don't have the, you know, the strength on the actual thing. So be careful when you're, if you are, you, you know, doing the same practice that I'm doing here, you don't want to over tighten it and ruin that worm drive. You want to make sure that that elbow is straight up and down actually or plumb i should say yeah so you could actually put a little yeah, torpedo level work. on the bottom of that fitting that can also help you out make sure it's nice and level and make sure right, that so yeah you want to just make plumb. sure you put some silicone on your ledger board this is going to secure the tub to so this is a really important detail this is something that uh, american standards started putting in their uh spec sheets and that's one thing you know there's a lot of people that uh try to correct me on things saying I've been doing it for this for this long and I, I just told you I've been doing it for 20 years on, on a certain thing and I haven't had an issue but manufacturers do actually change their processes you know sometimes they they do change the way that they're creating the tub and and they're requiring silicone for that drain assembly versus putty or something like this where they actually want a sealant on top of that ledger board. So this is something that I noticed in the last five years that a lot of manufacturers are wanting. And it makes a lot of sense because it really just 
really holds everything together. And it's, it's I mean, it's only a, a tube of caulking, so it's, it's not a big deal. But I really like this. It really gives a real solid connection to, um, you know, that, that bottom of your, your tub flange. Do it. I just use uh, a clear silicone. It just needs to be an adhesive that will adhere to the tub. So this tub, um, not this particular tub, but other tubs, you, you saw there I had actually had some mortar <laughs> already mixed. So you could see my, my mortar here. My intention was to use that. But since this was an above rough end tub, the distance between the bottom of the tub and the floor was little over six inches. So I kind of wasted my time even pouring that. But if you had a standard tub or a standard American standard Americast tub, you can just put a little bit of uh, uh, concrete down. So just like I have demonstrated here, you can put a little bit of uh, mortar and that will help set everything into place. And uh, this is fairly thick that I have here. This is really much more fluid. And again, it's just to basically bond to the bottom of the tub and just kind of hold everything in place. And it gives a real solid feel to it. But it's actually not even necessary on an America ca American cast tub, the American standard one. You don't even have to use mortar if you don't want to. But I always recommend anytime that you see that in the spec sheets that you can use mortar, I would definitely uh, recommend it. It definitely gives it a lot more solid feel. But with this above rough end type of tub, you know, the space was too big and it just wasn't worth uh the effort of trying to build that up. And again, this makes it so much easier when you have all the drywall out, you're able to get really get it in there nice and easily. And then I have a little bit of movement here. And since I have a door jam on this wall, I'm gonna make sure that my flange goes all the way up against the wall on the door jam wall because you could always fur out this back wall that we have since we have all the drywall open, but you're not gonna be able to do much. That's really important too. Like the door jam right here, you don't wanna be putting extension jams on the inside of your door frame because every time you go to close the door, it's gonna hit those extension jams and rub the paint off of it. <laughs> so that's why I'm making sure that you take that tub and suck it all the way up to that plumbing wall there to make sure that you don't have to do any extension jams and that your drywall and your uh, backer board, your waterproofing backer board all lines up nicely. And again, this is where the benefit of having all of those walls removed, you can do this very easily and make this, um, you're not trying to reference plaster or a wall in any form. This really just makes it a lot easier for you. Unless you put extension jams and you don't wanna put extension jams on the inside of your door frame. What you want to do on this type of tub is use some fender washers. These are some inch and a quarter fender washers. And I just use some galvanized screws for that. And what you do is just stick this right above the tub deck. And that's how you anchor the tub. So you want to do these on every stud. Again, pay attention to your manufacturer specifications. This is just the way American Standard one of this done. Uh, they put some wood had, shims in here. They actually had an indication to use roofing nails as well. I don't really like that. The, the, the roofing nails don't really have a, a really large head on them. So using these stainless steel fender washers are really nice. And I have that in the links below here for those fender washers. So you can just click on fender washers here and just order them from Amazon just to have them on hand. I always um, stock up on those so they don't run out. And I, again, if you want to get this done in seven days, you can't be running to Home Depot every day. If you can, if you have to run to Home Depot, do it at the end of the day. You don't want to be going there during the day and just ruining all of your momentum. So that, that's why having all the materials ahead of time really um, keeps you from uh, being distracted, I guess you could say. And you can just simply cut these off. So yeah, you always have to shim it. You know, most of the time, the tub, uh, there is going to be room. Got it. Okay. Um, it's going to okay, be wider so than 60 inches. What we're going to have is just a standard fitting with a locking nut. 
and then I just got a female adapter that's going to have basically just a short piece of PVC into my trap. So this I'll slide up onto my drain assembly and then glue into my trap. So this one had so plenty of room. Go ahead and Sometimes you don't have a lot of room fittings. to use that female adapter. Uh, sometimes you need the spigoted one that actually just slides right into the hub of the P-trap. But, it all, you know, every situation is a little bit different. All the plumbing isn't exactly at the this same height underneath those floors. Just hold that together for a second with that set up. Okay. And if you don't have access... This whole thing becomes a lot more challenging. Glue our trap, and we're gonna put this all together at once here. I would recommend getting two of these traps. Um, just have them on hand, just in case you mess up, it sets up and it, it's all glued together and that you can start over again and try it again. Um, you know, because these things are only a few dollars, but again, it's going to take you an hour, if not longer, to run around and get another one. So always have a couple of these on hand. And then, I, like I said, I would recommend getting not only this female adapter, but get the one that is a male spigot. Uh, I can't. I don't know why I can't pronounce that word. Spigot, S P I G O T, and it can that will allow you to slide it right into the hub of the P trap and that's just in case you don't have enough uh, height if you don't if you don't have a lot of room for that riser pipe okay and then we'll just set this in I always get the glued in traps too I, that, I think they're definitely the better way to go that's all there really is to it. it. Makes it makes it easy. Okay, I'm good. This is always a big. This is the biggest point. This is the biggest pain point for a lot of people. Very concerned about getting their tub installed. Um, you know, it's definitely something that uh, you know you can have a lot of anxiety over. But you know, I'm, my hope is that you you if you watch this demonstrated like this, that uh, it'll give you the confidence to be able to do that yourself as well. So, um, so below of every single one of my uh, tutorials, I have a write up of some important things that I think is worth going over. Because again, I know that not everyone's going to be installing the tub that I am installing. So I just wanted to give a couple reference points on other ways to go about it. So again, not all tubs require ledger boards. Some of them don't. That makes it kind of easy. But you know, hopefully they're well constructed because without the ledger board um you know there's other difficulties about not having ledger boards but most likely the ones without ledger boards are pretty durable tubs that that uh you know have enough construction that they're not going to dip down or anything in any way but mortar bed most of the time um when i'm using these I, it's just literally a setting material it's not made to actually level out the tub but it can do you can do that if, if you had an unlevel floor you can make your mortar thick enough to do it, but you just wouldn't be able to walk on the tub uh, until the following day. And it just is a little bit more of a delicate process of setting that tub and making sure that you get it level. But I, I would recommend just getting that subfloor done straight first. And if you're, you can always floor level your entire bathroom floor if it's out that much. If it's more than a quarter inch, uh, floor level are really is an easy product to use. You just have to... Uh, you know, prevent it from going out of the spaces that you don't want it. So, um, but I would always recommend addressing the actual subfloor versus trying to level it with mortar. It just does make it easier. And plus, if you're more than a quarter inch out, you don't want your tile work, you, you know, you don't want your tub sitting up a half inch on one side of the room. You, you know, you're going to have to do something anyway. So you might as well floor level the whole bathroom uh, versus just, uh, you know, just trying to level the tub with the, the mortar. So I just have this as just kind of some reference guides, just talking about mud beds and, uh, you know, how the ledger board should be done. 
um, along with the cutouts and stuff. So th these will all be in the specs of the bathtub you actually purchase. So it's not a, you know, it's not anything that you're not going to have available to you to begin with. Um, but then I just kind of demonstrate, you know, kind of the silicone that I, that I use or recommend. So all these things are have clickable links on them. Um, a lot of it's through my Amazon, so it does help out my channel if you purchase through that, but uh, it's just there to really help you out. Um, but here's another way to set the tub. So basically, I, I was really kind of referencing three main different ways that tubs are typically installed. And uh, so one is with a mortar bed, and that's the, probably the best way to go. So if, you're, if your tub can uh, is allowable to use mortar, go with it. I think that's the best way to go. A second option, a lot of tubs, is just using adhesive. You can just actually glue the legs of the, the bottoms of it. Works great too, nothing wrong with that. You just wanna make sure that your subfloor is clean of debris and dust, because you obviously want this to really bond to that subfloor. This also requires more of a level floor, so you wanna make sure that all of your, your, your pegs on the bottom of your tub is actually sitting on the floor, because if it's not, the adhesive isn't gonna do anything. Um, so, but most of the time when you have adhesive, you can also do mortar. And like I said, I would recommend doing the mortar over the adhesive. And then there's a lot of tubs that you just don't have anything at all. So some of these cheaper tubs you get from the big box stores, um, they just have a foam base and you just set them in place and just, uh, you know, basically anchor the sides in. So those ones, um, you know, really require a level subfloor because it's all being supported by the foam base. But, you know, the other type of tub that, you know, doesn't really uh, require anything is a cast iron tub. So those things are really constructed well. The only thing you would need is some metal shims. I have a link for that right here, just in case you did get a, a uh, cast iron tub, but just basically steel shims that you would place under the legs of a cast iron tub. But, uh, I would imagine most of you are not going to do that anymore. I mean, cast iron tubs are great, but boy, are they a beast to get in. I mean, most of them are still 300 pounds and uh, take a lot of work. So, and then fastening the tub, I kind of just kind of go over some of the different ways about it. But you want to be sure that you're not using drywall screws. You want to be using alkaline resistant screws or galvanized screws. And some tubs require you to do pilot holes and then drilling through the flange. But like I said, in, in this American Standard tub, it was essentially just having washers or roofing nails. So I'm a big fan of the washers. It has a lot more you know, real estate on it to actually hold the tub into place. So I would go with that. And then I just have a couple other helpful um, materials here. If you are mixing mortar, this is probably one of the best tools that you can have for bucket mortar. This is a uh, basically a, uh, a mixer for mixing mud at a thicker consistency. I really love it. It's great for uh, any type of concrete mixing in a bucket. And then I just want to say this again, is that, you know, in each section of my course, if you have a question, if you want to leave a comment, if you want to show your progress, if you want to share what you're doing, uh, that'd be awesome. I would be really uh, grateful for anything that you can post to this. I would love to see each one of these pages kind of being its own forum uh, because these will live here forever. It's unlike Facebook where somebody posts one thing and then you never see it again. So I think that uh, the time spent here would be great and, and help a lot of people out. So that's installing the tub. That was uh, right basically before lunch. That's just in my own little scenario there uh, of how I went about it. But uh, yeah, you get a decent tub. It can be a pretty easy installation. So here is what I'm really excited to show you guys, and that is the shower faucet itself, um, because I think this is gonna really help out a lot of you um, that have not done a whole lot of plumbing work. This is another pain point, um, anxiety produced type of project, but I think uh, this will really take it away from you a lot because there's a lot of things. There's, there's some valves I wanna show you that would eliminate you from even having to do any soldering which would be really awesome uh, i know that because you all that equipment does cost money to to have but let's just get started with it and we'll discuss as we go but again my this forum i'm hoping if you have any questions leave leave them here in the live chat and we can pause and go over things if needed 
Okay, so this is the final step of day two. So hopefully you had a uh, successful installation of your tub. And don't worry, don't worry if, if you had trouble with your tub. Um, it's completely acceptable to be novel and not get this shower faucet in. You'll have more time tomorrow morning to do it if you need a fresh start with that. But first thing you want to do is just remove those shark bite caps. Uh, make sure you have this removal tool. Um, it really does make it a lot easier to pull those off of there. And then you just want to make sure you sand up the fittings. So no matter what copper you're soldering, everything has to be clean and sanded. You need to make sure that there isn't any uh, residue, oxide, dirt, um, you know, and even the fittings, they're, they're, they, um, they're kind of coated to keep from getting that corrosion green color to them. So you want to use a pipe cleaner and a sand sanding paper to make sure that you remove the coating that they actually had on those fittings. This will ensure that you have a good um, bond of the flux. So you want to use a unleaded flux. This is the stuff that I primarily use, but you want to use a brush. You don't want the oils from your skin getting on the actual fitting again it's just about that flux doing its proper job when you heat that up the uh, solder will siphon into the joint so just make sure you have every area covered with the flux it's really important anything that you miss there could be um, a leak problem so and then you want to just uh, remove any excess flux now it would have been better to use a rag for that uh, to remove the excess around it but you don't want to have too much flux either And then as far as converting to half inch PEX, I like to use these copper half inch PEX to female adapters. Um, basically the copper, it, you heat it less, but then you want to make sure that you're getting a lead free solder as well. That's really important. All right, you're good. So now I would recommend using map gas. That's going to heat up that fitting faster. And again, so you want to try to hit the, heat the fitting, not the pipe necessarily. And I just always try to test it until it melts. Once it's melted, and you just go all the way around with your solder, try to hit every part. Because anytime you're in a small space like that, you don't want to be you know, having a flame in there too long. So the map gas makes a big difference. And if I would have had a wet rag, that would have actually worked out a little bit better there. Um, I'm not sure why I didn't have water on that rag. So again, hit, heat the fitting, and then it'll absorb the solder up into the joint. And once it heats up enough to where it melts, then you can just take the heat off. You don't want to, you don't want to overheat the joint. And if you, if it looks a little sloppy, you can just heat it up a little bit more. It's not the best. Okay. Okay. So what I like to use are these pro crimps. And what's nice about these is that you just slide them right on here, and it just keep, reveals the the right amount of pecs so this is what you need to be crimped properly so these little caps hold that right to that location so it's really kind of nice so you want to put your cold water on so this is um what you would consider pecs b type of pecs so most of your big box stores are going to have this stuff um you know it comes in blue red and and white and uh like i said those those pro crimps are probably the easiest ones to use because it makes sure it keeps you that space and and i use it anything that saves me a couple of minutes of work and any type of frustration um it's worth it uh in my mind and and that's one of those key points is that but you know there are so many different ways you can go about installing this type of um shower system this is just what i think is the most is one of the easiest ways to go about it along with um you know there's just a lot of being PEX, it's just a lot more flexible all the way around. Um, and really technically, at least even in our area, you technically wouldn't even have to, well, I shouldn't say that around here. I guess Allegheny County would require that. But this is an access panel to the back of the tub. You could technically use shark bites on here because you have access to them. So if you had some shutoff valves that were, were uh, shark bites, you can just slide that right onto the copper, just like the, the caps were that were on there, and then just go from there. And so you can avoid using, um, you know, having to solder anything for that matter. So, and later on, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. Like, you can buy a valve 
with the, the tub spout already on, and all you have to do is connect it with the PEX. So you can make it really easy that way. Your cold side, and then your hot on the left. And then I got these shutoff valves. So you put your probe crimped on here, here. So these are made by Apollo, half inch by half inch ball valve. I have the links for these things down below, but I do like using the rigid tools. I think they are fairly well made, and I've probably had this thing for <laughs> 10 years or so. And then you want to just test your no-go go gauge. So if this slides on on the go gauge, then you crimped it properly. So just make sure these are off before you turn back the water on. Okay. So I'm gonna put extend these up. I'm just I just cut these at a random length. Um, I just wanted to because I'm gonna be doing all the other work on the inside of the tub area. So we'll just extend these up and then cut them to fit where our valve's gonna be. So just want to make sure you. It's easier to crimp from this access area. I just want to make be clear too. Okay, so this is a universal rough in by depth. When I'm saying hot on the left, hot on the cold, or cold on the right, I mean it when you're looking from the tub area over. So that's why, um, you know, when I, when I when you're looking at from the back of the tub, it looks like it's opposite, but it's actually hot on the left, cold on the right um, when you're in the actual tub itself. Delta, and this is probably one of my favorite shower faucets to install. It's really simple to use. They basically all have male threads on it. But I want to clarify something here real shortly about the rough-in valves. So I wanted to pause here real quickly and go over ordering the supplies for your bathroom. So one of the places that I really love using and going to is build. All right, so I'm going to pause there because I'm going to actually do this live since we are here. So basically that valve was Delta Ashland. I really like Delta, and I'll, I'll, you'll see here in a moment why I like the Delta valves a lot um, and why I really like to use them, Ashland Tub and Shower. So this is basically the system that I'm installing right now. Um, but I just want you to be aware that when you're looking at this trim kit, now I, I'm starting to see this more often, and I don't know if it's just because people are wanting to buy different shower heads or what, but um, I am starting to see a lot of these not have the shower heads on them. So you can obviously go buy the system that has uh, the shower heads already incorporated onto them. But anyways, um, you know, obviously you're gonna need a shower head, so I'd probably just get one that already has it on there. Um, but most of the time, this is just trim, you know? So when you're looking at this price of $103, this is just the trim itself. And as you can see right here, it says add on valve. And so when you click on that, it typically just gives you two scenarios. So one is the one that we're installing. This is what I installed. And the main reason I bought this valve is because I think most people are going to just end up getting this. These are the ones that usually come in a, in a pre-packaged kit that you get from the box stores. So if you bought a shower faucet from like Home Depot, for instance, it's probably gonna have this valve already in it and it's just a standard one. There's nothing um, else about it. But the other one that you can get is one with an integral valve. These are just the two options they auto automatically give you. But these have integral valves in them. So if you didn't have access to the back of the shower, or you didn't have any shutoffs right at the unit, this is what you would wanna buy. So if you're in a shower wall that you're not gonna have access, you still you need to have shutoffs at the valve so that in case something happened with that cartridge, or if the shower is leaking, that you can shut it off. But these are two great options, nothing wrong with that, and I'm gonna be demonstrating that. 
But basically what I want you to refer to, and this is, this is where planning ahead is going to really help out a lot. So Delta rough in most, and that's the other thing about Delta too. I mean, not that I'm trying to sell Delta, but it is something that, um, their universal valves can be used on basically most of all of their trims. So this is a diverter valve. So you need to make, you need to pay attention to which ones you're looking at, but all these ones with the plaster guards on them, these are all the ones that you can be used with that trim kit. So what would be nice and make it easier for you is to get something like this, where it already has the PEX fitting. I don't know why this has to zoom in like that. Pull it up here a little bit. So you can see this has the PEX already adapted to it. So I'm not making a connection there. All I have to do is stick that PEX right on there and I'm ready to go. But what's even better, and this is what I would recommend you if you don't want to get into soldering and or any of that stuff, is to buy one that already has the tub spelt already incorporated, it already done. It has PEX on all three sides. So literally no soldering at all. Just connect your pecs to it and you're good to go. So the only difference about this is that it's going to be having a dictated, um, you know, drop. But as I'll explain in the video as I go here, um, you know, that has to be within a certain range anyways. And, and what they have this set at, I think it's nine inches. Let me just see what the spec sheet says. Uh, yeah, nine inches from, from this down to your port so that it's a little low um from the center of the valve normally i go about nine or ten inches from the bottom of my like when i when i solder my own stuff i get a 10 inch drop and then it has the elbow so i might actually be like 11 inches down below uh the actual rough and valve but hey i mean if this is gonna this would literally save you even if you're a contractor this is gonna save you at least 25 minutes 20 minutes of work um, and then you, you know, you can just immediately get to it. So I think that's a great, great option. Um, but just be careful about what pecs you're looking at here. So some of these, so cold expansion, this is the Ubinor type of pecs. That's pecs A. The stuff that we're using is pecs B. So you need to pay attention to it. You'll see this little kind of extra rigid, um, little ridge on the, the pecs fitting. Your, your, your PEX B is not going to fit over that. That's the type of Ubinor PEX fittings that basically um, expand. You have to have an expanding tool to go over top of it, which is one of the reasons I haven't gotten into it because the price of that tool is still around 500 bucks. And I think if you're, you know, for my purposes and for who I'm showing most people, they're not going to go ahead and invest in a $500 tool to install a shower valve. I think that that the the Pex crimpers, the shark bite ones for 50 bucks is probably the most you're going to want to spend on a tool for like, you know, a one or two time use. So that's what all I really wanted to express is that if you do your homework and I have all these links down below here, I'll show you that shortly, but you could just order this stuff and it's going to make it a lot faster and easier for you to, to move forward. So let's just skip through. Um, now this, this isn't section. the only two options and that's what I'm trying to clarify here. So Benor type of packs. So be careful and make sure that you're actually, and I do explain all of that. Stick a two by four or two by six straight up against your drywall. The other valve that I was originally going to suggest, and that is just having the integral stops with the packs, and then you can have the universal, uh, male, uh, thread on adapters that you can go with. But I'll tell you what, I think. Uh, if you really want to make things simple, this might be a really great option for you if you're using PEX. So I just wanted to clarify that. Leave me a comment below if you have any questions about ordering things. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Okay, so installing the Delta valve. Very simple. All you have to do is stick a 2x4 or 2x6 straight up against your drywall if you have a standard 2x4 wall. And this will be at the right depth for tile up to about a half inch, even three quarters of an inch. Uh, there's a lot of variation that you have the ability for um, having this discussion plate mount to this. But so these are just some diagrams that actually come with your Delta faucet. So typically the plaster guard that they comes with is kind of a reference point of your finished wall. So most of the time they want that to be flush. 
or plus or minus three eighths. So you have three eighths of an inch of variance there. And, you know, the typical, what the real measurement is, if you ask me, is what it is from the back of the actual valve to your finished wall. And that's typically two and three quarters of an inch. That's what that most, most valves are like that. I shouldn't say that's for everything, but, you know, Kohler, Moen, um, you know, in Delta, they're all about the same. And so what makes this nice is that you're able to just stick a two by six or two by eight or, you know, the blocking that's inch and a half thick right up against the back of the, the wall if it's a two by four wall and you're gonna be at the right depth. But I get into a little bit more of the, how that is. Um, but really most of the time your backer board and your tile and thin set layer all put together is one inch. So keep that in mind, but really you can be an inch and three eighths, even an inch and a half overall in, in this scenario and still be able to have that excussion plate and everything work out just fine. So typically just a standard three eighths inch tile. All you have to do is have this two by four straight up against this back wall and then um, mount that to that and you're at the right depth. So that makes it really nice and easy. Uh, oh, I don't know why this thing is getting so glitchy right now. A couple other rules on this is that your tub spout has to be a minimum to have the spout. Uh, a couple yeah. other rules on this is that it's so back wall. Trying to get this back to that. And it it's not glitchy like this when it's not online. I just think I'm using a lot of RAM power to, mm. to be. So that makes it really nice. So that makes it really nice and easy. Uh, it's not going to pause for me, is it? Okay, there we go. So this is my breakdown essentially. Um, backer board half inch most of them are going to be half inch your tile most tile porcelain ceramic usually three eighths of an inch thick and then your thin set layer is a tough one to calculate but it's usually about an eighth of an inch and that's where it can grow i mean there's a lot of times it can grow another eighth inch pretty easily um, it's usually thicker not thinner honestly but if you go with subway tile or something like that it could be thinner than an eighth inch um, but roughly your overall thickness with the backer boards one inch so you have two by four, that's three and a half. The blocking's an inch and a half. And then so you have basically an inch plus the um, the two inches of what the valve is. So you're three inches, you're, in, you're within that two and three quarter plus or minus three eighths of an inch. And uh, you should be, you know, that'll work out just fine with the uh, two by four in the back of the wall. So uh, a couple other rules on this is that your tub spout has to be a minimum of eight inches from your valve and then you can go to a maximum of 18 inches so eight to 18 inches so you have a lot of leg room as far as the depth of where you want to put your um, tub spout now i typically always just take my tub spout off the tub deck about three inches so three inches off the tub deck and then centering my valve basically at 15 inches that gives me about a 10 inch leg that I need to cut for my tub spout. So roughly 10 inches. Okay, I'm gonna sand your ends nicely. This pipe drill I just bought really makes it nice and easy. You can put that on the end of a drill and then uh, really clean up your fittings really nicely. So that's pretty much the way I do it from now on. But this is a little bit more your brass affordable. Fitting here. But all of this work wouldn't have to be done if you got the valve with the PEX fittings. Like you wouldn't have to do all of this. So this is definitely a lot more work in a lot of ways. So I think spending an extra 20 bucks on a valve it's probably worth it the most. You, this is just me basically referencing whether that's perpendicular with each other. Again, if you got the valve that already had the leg on there, you don't even have to mess around with this. 
you know, don't be inhaling that smoke. That stuff's not any good for you. What's this called again? Soldering? Yeah. Okay. Got a wet rag that time. Makes it a little bit nicer. And I should mention, you want to use type L copper. You want to use the thicker copper. You don't want to okay, be using Okay, so then you want to just heat the actual brass fitting here. One note, I should have removed uh, that actual housing there. It's only a, a temporary cap, but you don't want to heat that up and, and ruin that gasket in there. It's not going to really hurt anything. I mean, you can get your cartridge in there just fine. Okay, so... We're going to make this easy on ourselves for the rest of this and just using PEX fittings. So we just got our female PEX fittings here. And what you want to do is just put some Teflon's tape around each thread here. So about four to five revolutions is normally what I do. Want to try to keep that Teflon tape. You want to flat. go clockwise with it, so you want to thread it on. So when you thread the the fitting on, it's going to tighten the uh, Teflon tape. You're not going to loosen it up. So always go clockwise with the rotation. Okay. Then we're also going to use a little bit of pipe thread sealant. This is an addition. This is something I started implementing about three years so ago. Apply a little bit of that. It definitely gives them Maybe extra insurance. Fittings. And uh, it definitely does a good job. So I would recommend using both. But put the Teflon tape on first and then the sealant. It can be a little bit messy, but. Okay, so now you want to put a, some kind of support for your tub spout. So I would just put a, another two by four down below so that you can anchor a strap onto this. I always line up my tub spout with my uh, the uh, overflow cover. So it is. Uh, it's looking like it's 14 and three quarter actually. So when we sit this on here, we just wanna make sure we go 14 and three quarter to the center. And we can just get a copper strap. The rest of it that makes it a breeze, just basically cut this connector. Just need a couple elbows. And then what I like to use are these Pro crimps, and what's really great about these is that they have these little red tabs on them. So you just sit this right on here. So if you were to take this cap off, it gives you the, the right amount of reveal that you need to set this crimp ring. So it's really nice because you don't have to keep moving these around to make them at the right distance. These are, these are designed to just slide right on there and then they're right at the right location. Those tubing cutters make it nice square cuts. That's important. What's that? Obviously, to get the right amount of reveal all the way around, it has to be a square cut. So, but Lasman, you were asking me whether a three quarter inch, obviously, yes, three quarter inch would give you more water flow. But you have to remember that the valves themselves are only going to have so much water flow. Um, I'd have to look at the Pacific valve. Uh, of what the water flow is. I want to say it was five gallons okay, per minute. So it's a good idea to use a no go go gauge on the go gauge. If it slides over top of it, it's crimped correctly. So always check these. It's a good way to just, re you know, keep you, keep you to remember that you crimped everything. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's no doubt PEX B with these type of fittings is going to reduce the flow of water within the pipe because the diameter inside of the fittings is smaller 
unlike where copper and everything else, it's actually um, just as big all the way around. So there is a reduction there. Um, from what I understand, um, that difference is not tremendous in any way. So going with three quarter inch packs would obviously give you more flow. And I always recommend it. That, that's the one thing. Um, if clients wanted to get a rain shower head, a handheld, and a um, with rain shower head handheld and then having a regular um, shower faucet, um, or if they had any body sprays, I would always say we need three quarter inch lines up here because that that will give you the volume that you need for all of those things functioning. But for a standard shower head and a standard tub, um, I really don't think you're going to notice the difference if you use three quarter inch packs at all. And the main reason is is because your your shower heads and everything are reducing. Now you might be able to fill up the tub a little bit quicker in that scenario. Um, but as far as how everything else functions, it's not going to, I don't think it's going to, it's, it's limited and I have to look at the specific valve, but I believe they, it's basically a maximum with the cartridge that you stick in there. I think it's a maximum of five gallons per minute. And I don't think you're going to have any issue with getting that kind of water volume, um, out of the half inch pecs. But, you know, I'm going to look into that a little bit. So I have a more defined answer to that, but um, no doubt, if you're going to get a whole bunch of accessories, if you're going to have a handheld and a rain shower head and a regular shower head or have three components of some sort, I would run three quarter inch lines up to that bathroom so that you can make sure you have enough pressure for it. But it really all depends. You have to add up all the fixtures and see how much volume of water, because a lot of the times you, you might have three functions, but you're not going to have uh, the ability to turn them on all at the same time. So you know, you're still might be just at that five gallons per minute anyways and just fine. But where I really see most of the issues is if we're getting those body sprays because each body spray is usually two gallons per minute plus your shower head. So there you're at, you're like at eight gallons per minute that you're needing. Um, so, yeah. And then we'll go ahead and run our shower port. So I'll just take a extended long piece here. Typically off the floor, you want to be about 82 inches. A lot of plumbers back in the day used to do 78 inches, but people are a lot taller now. So I would go 82. So if you have this set at about 82 inches off the floor. Just a drop of your elbow, pretty simple. Pick this. Okay, we're good there. Yeah. And this is a little plug that I make. Okay. Because you obviously want to test everything, so you need to have some kind of plug. I always like to put these on here. I'm just like a little uh, hose adapter, shark bite, so then I can test everything. Okay. Turn on our water. Yep. Works. Okay, so one quick thing that I get a lot of comments about is when you install one of these Delta valves and you don't actually have the cartridge in, um, what it'll do is mix the hot and cold water together. So if you have another bathroom, like for instance here, right on the other side of the wall here, there's a bathroom right here, you'll end up getting mixture of hot and cold. So you won't be able to get completely cold water in that bathroom if you have the rough end valve installed without the cartridge. Or hot water. Just know that there. when you're doing this, it shouldn't be a big deal for the next couple days, but if you definitely need cold water in that other bathroom, you wanna make sure that you put the cartridge in this Delta valve. You could do that or just shut off the cold side of the water. So you could just shut off, or I'm sorry, the, the hot side of this supply. If you just shut that off, that obviously will prevent everything from mixing together and you can just get cold water. Most of the time, you, that's all you really need is cold water when you're doing most of the stuff in your bat or you know construction because you wanna use cold water for, um, mixing thin set 
everything, you know, you don't want anything setting up too quickly. So a lot of times you don't need really hot water for anything. So you can just shut it off and then that'll prevent that from mixing or just simply put in the cartridge and then, you know, that'll prevent uh, that from all mixing. So that's really it. That's pretty simple. This is the end of day two. This always feels good to have, you know. Okay, so at this stage, you really want to test your tub. So fill it all the way up, test that overflow. That's really important. You don't want to have to deal with this later on. Uh, and I always suggest run the water first. Don't start filling up the tub. Run it first. Make sure that your drain connections are all nice. Um, and already uh, basically leak free before you go filling the tub up. You don't want to have a leak afterwards. So, but always test that overflow. That's going to be really important. You don't want to get a call back or you don't want to have a problem later on. So we just filled that up. Now we're going to test it and make sure this will really uh, test that drain and make sure everything's connected properly. So, and that's what this, that's what this uh, project will get you to in seven days is this type of project. Um, yeah, so day two um, is usually a great accomplishment. I know that most of the clients feel very good at the end of day two because they actually have something that's actually functioning. Um, and this will set you up for success to be able to get that seven days. So the rest of this process in a lot of ways is... Um, not as labor intensive, if you ask me. I always think that the first two days are probably the, the hardest workouts. Um, and really, the, the first two days is where you're going to find all the issues. So that can cause a lot of stress and, and you know, having to replace more things than you might want to not want it to do. So that, you know, that includes structurally or, um, you know, some of the plumbing, electrical, stuff like that. So, but down below here... I'll let you see the rest of the bathroom here. So you can see that toilet's pretty close here. So you can see that's why I could not go with a 32-inch uh, tub because that would have been way too close to that toilet. So then down below here, I have all the links of everything that I used. So, you know, including the, the specific valve that I used. Um, and again, if you want to make life easy on yourself, uh, I would definitely recommend getting a valve that's already set up with the plumbing that you want to use. So you can just get one that just has the PEX adapters on the, the hot and cold supply. And then you can still go ahead and solder your tub spout in or just simply buy one that has it all incorporated. So, I mean, really, uh, I think the difference in cost is twice as much. So I think this valve is 40 bucks and this was like 80 but you're saving a whole heck of a lot of work just buying the one with this. Um, and then if, again, if you don't have access to the back and you don't have shutoffs, you can get the same scenario with the integral shutoffs. So I kind of just keep this as a reference. Um, what I'm hoping is, is that if you buy this course and you're actually doing a bathroom, you could just jump in here the night before, kind of refresh your memory on what you're going to be doing, get your head straight and get ready to, to really tackle your job um, and then again I have all these links right here again this is a great I mean I'm just happy with this tool I think this thing's really worked out great this is for sanding all the copper and stuff but hey if you don't if you get the other type of valve you might not even have to do any soldering at all so you don't have to buy any of this other equipment um, which can save you quite a bit now I do have two options down here these are the crimpers that I like to use this is the rigid. I just I find it to be a more a, a better quality tool, but it does come with a price. So 200 bucks for that. That's you know I would say if you're a professional, or if you're going to be doing more than you know two to three bathrooms, I would get the rigid because it's going to last longer. But there's really nothing wrong with this. This is just a regular shark bite um, crimping tool. 50 bucks, um, and then it actually actually even comes with a no go go gauge. So these are perfectly fine, but if you're doing this every day, these things aren't, they're just not as accurate. They're more of a pain in the neck in some ways. So I, I really like the rigid. 
Um, I never really did like the ones that have multiple heads on them, but that's just that's just just me. It's just the way I feel about them. And then again, if you have any questions about anything in your own project, you can always post them down here below. And uh, this is where I'm gonna probably spend most of my time answering questions. I've been doing a lot of stuff on social media and stuff, and I'm really feeling like that's a big waste of my time. <laughs> waste of my time. And uh, and I just really want to get this platform put together. So if you're interested and in, uh, you know you want to support my channel, go to bathroomremodeling.teachable.com. It's only 25 bucks for now. I'm gonna probably I have day three just about done. I'm still having to do all the write-ups. It does take a lot of time to put all these things in there, but I'm hoping to have day three done by the end of the week, and um, and then the price will most likely start going up a little bit on that um but um uh, yeah so that was our basically our event tonight uh tomorrow i might be on tomorrow i gotta get all this right up on these different parts for day or i'm sorry it's not even on here yet day three is basically hanging the rest of this drywall getting your waterproofing board up and then even maybe uh actually getting that that floor um i'm gonna be using schluter ditra basically a membrane for underneath your tile. So that'll all be for day three. Um, and then we can actually start getting into the fun stuff, which is going to be the tiling. So Ray all day, good points. Any suggestions for soaker tub uh, stabilization? So or if it's a freestanding tub, man, that these a lot of these freestanding tubs these days, there's not much, um, not much to anchor onto the floor. Um, you know, I just installed one six months ago and I, I did put some dabs of silicone on the back end of it to keep it from moving around, but there was really no mechanism in, in order to do that. And let me get myself big up here. Um, so yeah, no, I mean, I, you know, if it's a soaker tub, um, those are tough. Some of those cheaper ones, they just don't have any uh, way to really mechanically hold them to the floor <laughs> so you know a lot of those ones i would actually just put silicone underneath the feet when i'm setting it and that kind of helps but if if you really bump one of those soaker tubs you know it kind of kind of causes a problem so i'm not sure if i have a good um suggestion on that but if you're to if it's a soaker tub that's going to be like a drop-in tub definitely mortar you definitely want to be um doing a mortar bed uh, you know, underneath of it. So that's, that's, you know, that's really the best way to go about it because it really kind of holds everything together. So, but, um, all right, well, it's about nine 30. Um, I'm trying to keep these things on our hour. Hasn't happened yet, but, uh, thanks everyone for joining me. Uh, again, please give me a like subscribe if you haven't, because I'm going to keep doing these live videos. I don't know if I'll be on tomorrow. I might be able to get stuff done enough to do it but i want to i want to live stream all of this stuff so go to my youtube channel if you missed any of it you can go to the playlist of bathroom remodeling online course and i have them all there for you to see so the one difference is you're one might be wondering is like why would i pay for your course if you're already going to have them on youtube well you know how youtube works they're going to watch an ad every 10 minutes and it's going to distract you and um you know i feel that all these platforms these days um they're just made to distract you and, and, and uh, you know, you're going to get notifications from other creators that you follow. And then all of a sudden you're not paying attention to bathroom remodeling anymore. You're actually just browsing through YouTube. So that's where I think having the course structured is going to keep you focused and get you um, in the right path. So uh, I might answer one more questions here. Let me see what somebody else asked me. Dan, what brand of fixtures do you have the best luck with? Um, well, when it comes to faucets, um, so far, I've been really, really pleased with uh, the, the Delta shower faucets. Um, I think they're really, um, you know, that, that was a demonstration I just installed right now uh, or showing you in this particular bathroom. Um, but um, really, I mean, my other go-tos are um, besides Delta here. Let me just shrink myself down for a second. So... You know, Hans Grohe is another great system, and I'm going to have some demonstration on that soon. I really like these a lot. They always seem to be quality products. These, uh, 
these, uh, basically they have the eye box. So this is a tub and shower faucet right here. These are kind of nice um, because it has a little handle that turns on your shower port and turn, turns on your tub spout. So I really like these a lot because they have both of the valves, the diverter valve and the mixing valve all incorporated. So Hans Grohe is definitely a great product. Um, what else do I, Mo, Moen's good too. I mean, I have no problem with Moen. Um, they were really, uh, you know, I, I would just recommend not getting the ones from the big box stores because a lot of them, you know, they're not the same. Um, you know, at least, at least from my experience, I've bought some valves and, or different kits from Home Depot and it just wasn't quite the same quality as the stuff. And this is all on build.com. I mean, that's where I order most of my stuff, but yeah, these, these, um, the, a lot of the Moen products, they're pretty good and they're, and they, and they have just as good of customer service. You can get a hold of them if something went bad. Um, but you know, the one thing I actually went and installed this year that I always had wanted to were these Amazon, um, shower valves. So let me actually go to my store. Uh, how do I get to my actual store? T tub and shower faucets. So if you go to my Amazon store, and I'll put the link in the description below for that as well. Um, but here, yeah, here are some of my suggestions. This is an actually a Amazon valve that I installed. Uh, it came with everything. So you could see the price of this with the handheld and the shower head, and it worked really great. So I'm gonna have a tutorial on that soon. Um, there was just a lot of tricky things with this, and um, I know a lot of plumbers have an issue with a lot of these fixtures. One issue with this that I could tell right off the bat was that I couldn't figure out any way to um, keep it from getting scalding. It, it didn't have any type of mechanism to adjust the water um, hotness to it, which is a problem in a lot of areas, especially if you're getting um, the proper permits for things. If you can't if you can't keep it under 120 degrees, then that's a problem meeting code, and you don't obviously don't want to be scalding your 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 clients. But I mean, I'm not saying that, that this is the best way to go. I'm just saying I was actually kind of impressed with the function of it. It actually worked pretty well. Um, but I have these on my Amazon store. This is the iBox with the Hans Grohe um, box. And then I got some extra other valves on here that uh, I've been pleased with. But Amazon's kind of tough to order from in some ways with this stuff because they don't they don't work as well um, having an all-inclusive package like, like, uh, like build.com has. So... Uh, I still prefer shopping here because it's just an easier experience and it, you know, it kind of has everything put in together, but yeah, uh, Delta, Hans Grohe, Moen, um, you know, some of the Kohler stuff's not bad, but I've been really, I've been really dissatisfied with Kohler for the last few years. Um, I'm not sure exactly what they're doing, but, uh, some of their tubs have been so thin constructed and just complete garbage. Um, I used to, I used to do nothing but install Kohler and in the last few years, it's just been getting cheaper and cheaper and, and not as good. So, you know, but, um, thanks Ray all day. I appreciate it, man. Um, so, all right, I'm going to jump off tonight. Might see you tomorrow. If not, I'll definitely be there the following day. Um, and thanks again, everyone. I appreciate it.